that. Okay, good. Okay, so just leave it there. It's fine. Um, all right, everybody. So I have to see, imagine you're all there. We're all together. This little practice, another variation of the Buddhas that we're using, Vajrasattva, who is the, and again, in the tantric aspect of, of Shakyamuni Buddha, actually. And he's related particularly to, to purification. I think it's because he's related particularly to emptiness. And I think that, I think, because empty, when we realized emptiness is when we actually cut the root of all delusions. But this practice is like putting atomic bombs under the tendencies, under the delusions, under karmic imprints, under the tendencies. So it helps our mind more easily, you know, move forward, pro make progress. So it's course of it's done in the framework of what we call the four opponent powers, the four R's. It's easy to remember. So the first one. It's called regret, but I think it's really important to understand this one properly. Even if we've been Buddhist for years, many people really misunderstand it and think of it as guilt. Think of it as, as saying, I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't have done that, which is really just anger. But regret is a really specific state of mind. And it's um, not what we're used to at all, because we, we have the tendency to be guilty to feel guilty. And what guilt is, is looking in the past and going, as His Holiness said, we, I, look, I did this, I did that, I did this. And then we conclude, and I'm a bad person. This happens very, very naturally. So we have to consciously change it. So all the lamas say, it's just like, um, if, you don't, if you've eaten poison, it was very clear, we know that poison is something that will cause us future suffering. So the millisecond we discover our dinner has poison in it, instantly the response will be very logical. Oh my God, what a fool, I can't believe it. I didn't realize I ate poison. Quick, what can I do with it? It's exactly that attitude. But that attitude takes time because we're not used to the concept of karma. We're not used to the concept that what I think and do and say produces the person I become. We think of it as something that when, when we're naughty, if we get caught, we'll get punished. That's the instinct we have, which is just this dualistic nonsense for the Buddha. It's nothing to do with that. So regret, the first step. The second step is refuge. We'll remember the Buddha. We'll think of the Buddha in the second step. So this first step, it's like being your own friend. That's how I think about it, you know, being your own friend. Um, you acknowledge to yourself. I mean, we're normal human beings. We've got attachment. We've got anger. We've got jealousy. We have depression. We have rubbish. And then we do dumb things with our body and speech, first of all, that harm others. So this first step is to acknowledge to ourselves the dumb things we've done to harm others, you know. So we think first today. For most of us, we don't go around raping and killing too many people. We love our speech. We humans are very good at speech. We badmouth people, always finding fault, always criticizing, using harsh language, you know, harming others. Maybe we, we might say things that aren't true, this kind of thing, you know. So we first think, whatever I've done today with my body and my speech, that have harmed others, even small, you know, we just acknowledge them, we say them to ourselves, we note them. So just for a second, contemplate that. And think of anything, note anything you've done with your body and speech today that's harmed others. You're talking to yourself, by the way. You know, you're talking to yourself. You're being your own friend. You're acknowledging the poison you've eaten today. So now we can think about, you know, this life, particular things we might have done, cheated on others, killed, lied, stolen, you know, things maybe that we're, sometimes that we kind of hold as a burden, you know, we haven't dealt with it, and it kind of sits there, you know. Maybe we've had relationships in the past with our parents, we've been very abusive, and they're now dead, and we have this kind of, you know, we carry it around with us, partners we've cheated on, things like that. So think of some things. 
buried away in there that we've done with our body and speech to harm others in this life, particular things. Like I always think of the abortion I had when I was 23. I mean, I, at the time, I didn't think of it as killing anybody. You know, I just knew I didn't want what came out the other end at the time of, you know, when, when I, at nine months later. So I had an abortion. So now with the Buddhist view, I'm recognizing it was a consciousness that came into my womb. It was a person and I killed them. So I acknowledge that one. So think of anything you've done with your body and speech in this life that has harmed others. So now we think, you know, we now think of, um, we now think <clears throat> anything, imagine if we have the view, if we have confidence in the view that our mind uh, has gone back and back and back in previous lives, we can deduce logically that we must have done countless actions to harm sentient beings, you know, I mean, join the universe, we're all the same. <clears throat> so we think, we think all these actions I remember and all the countless actions I don't remember this life as well, because I mean, when I did them, I sowed seeds in my mind. And I know why I want these to ripen. I don't want these seeds to ripen. This is a process that happens naturally. Every millisecond of what we think and do and say, so seeds and seeds will ripen. Well, I do not want further suffering. Thank you very much. I am sick of suffering. This first step regret is compassion for ourselves. It's crucial to understand the meaning. It's not guilt. It's not I'm bad. It's not I shouldn't have done it. Out of ignorance, we did certain things. We think that and out of, we think, oh my God, what a fool I was having done those actions that have sowed seeds in my mind. And I don't want them to ripen as suffering because I am sick of suffering. I'm fed up with suffering. That's the basis of it. I'm sick of suffering. I'm sick of, you know, I don't want the suffering to come from all this poison because everything we think and do and say programs me. And we think also maybe vows I've broken in the past. We've probably been Buddhists in the past, having broken vows, etc. I regret all of this from the depths of my heart because I do not want future suffering. This is truly for your own sake, regret, compassion for yourself. So whom can I turn to? Reliance. Second part is reliance. And there's two parts here. The first part is where we rely upon the Buddha. So this is the crucial difference between this, the attitude here and the attitude we'd have if we rely upon a creator. If, when I was a Christian, when I was a Catholic, I relied upon God and I had to, con you know, I'm confessing to God and then I'm begging God to forgive me because that's, what purifies me, but not here. You know, a sin in, in Christianity is doing what God said not to do. That is not the point here. It's a natural law for the Buddha. So he's like a messenger. He's like a doctor. You don't ask your doctor to forgive you for smoking cigarettes and then please get you off the hook from cancer. It doesn't work like that. So we rely upon the Buddha, our doctor. So happy to have a doctor the Buddha, in this case, Vajrasattva. So we, if we were familiar with the visualization, it's from Tantra, it's the Bodhisattva aspect, blissful white radiant light body, sitting cross-legged, he's sitting above our crown, facing the same way as us, holding a doji in his right hand, which represents compassion, and wisdom is represented by the bell, held cross-legged, no, no, sorry, they're crossed at his heart. Wisdom and compassion. Radiantly smiling. And if we have a Lama, <clears throat> he's the manifestation of our Lama. Our Lama's mind. 
white light body sitting in a bodhisattva style, cross-legged with a broad gem bell. Delight that we found a doctor. Take refuge in the Buddha, you know, that's what it means. So now the second part of the second step, reliance, is where we now have compassion for those we've harmed. Why it's under the heading reliance is because we need to rely upon, you know, suffering sentient beings. If we've never met any suffering sentient beings, how could we have compassion? So here we're trying to have compassion for others. Regrets like compassion for yourself. So now we think of those we've harmed, cheated on, lied to, aborted, killed stolen from, etc. Since the beginning of time, all these sentient beings, the ones we can remember and the ones we can't. So we have such compassion for them and we think we must regret for, we must now purify for their sake. And if we're brave enough, you know, we can now have compassion for those who have harmed us. So what's the logic of this? Not just some sentimental reason. It's very logical. Because that the harm they have done to us, as a result of their negative karma, they will suffer in the future. That's the basis of compassion for others. Bodhisattvas have more compassion for the harmers because for this very reason. We've at least finished the karma of that suffering we've experienced at their hands. And they've only just begun creating further suffering. That's the basis of compassion. It's very powerful. If we can. If you're not ready for that, then don't do it. So now we do the remedy, the third one, the remedy. So here, there's rem many remedies, you know, the antidote, they call this. I mean, if you regret lying, then the antidote is tell the truth. If you regret killing, then an, an antidote can be to help heal people. But here, the particular antidote is done in the framework of this particular meditation, where we visualize the Buddha. It's said that all the practices we do that involve the, the Buddha are much more powerful because of the power of enlightened beings. So imagining Lama Vajrasattva above our crown, he now sends powerful you know, nectar <clears throat> from his heart. And arc, imagine it arcing around and entering your crown and filling you and intensely, powerfully forcing out through all the lower parts of your body, all the imprints of all the harm we've ever done since beginning this time with our bodies to harm sentient beings. Just visualize, use your creative imagination. And as Lama Zobar says, the more powerfully you think this and want this, that itself is what purifies. It's our mind, you see, There's nothing mystical. It's our mind that regrets. It's our mind that has compassion and relies on the Buddha. It's our mind that purifies. So it's the strength of our mind involved in each of these steps. That is what purifies. It's not a question, you see, this is completely different if you're a Muslim or a Christian. I'm not criticizing, but it's utterly different. You rely upon God forgiving you. Well, Buddha would forgive you if he's a nice person. That's not what purifies. It's your own mind. As Lama Yeshi says, we create negativity with our mind. We purify it by creating positivity with our mind. So visualizing this powerful nectar 
sorry, excuse me, filling us completely and totally driving out all the imprints of all the harm we've ever done since beginning this time with our bodies through the lower parts of our body disappearing into space like filthy liquid, not one atom left. Just use your creative imagination, that's all. It's the strength of your wish for this to happen. As we recite the mantra three times. Om Vajrasattva Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasattva Tenopatita Dido Mebawa Suto Shayo Mebawa Supo Shayo Mebawa Anorato Mebawa Sarva Siddhi Memprayatsa Sawa Karma Sutsa Me Sitam Shriam Kuru Hung Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tatagata Vajra Mami Mutsa Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sattva Ahung Pe Om Vajrasattva Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasattva Teno Patita Dido Mebawa Suto Shayo Mebawa Supo Shayo Mebawa Anurato Mebawa Sarva Siddhi Mevrayata Sarva Karma Sutsa Me Sitam Shriam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tatagata Vajra Mami Mutsa Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sattva Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sattva Samaya Manupalaya Vajra Sattva Teno Patita Dido Mebawa Suto Shayo Mebawa Supo Shayo Mebawa Anurato Mebawa Sarva Siddhi Memprayata Sawa Karma Sutsa Me Sitam Shriam Kuru Hung Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tatagata Vajra Mami Musa Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sattva Ahung Pe totally disappeared. Every atom of the negativity created by our body since the beginning of time disappeared into space, full of this blissful, blissful nectar. How amazing. So now I'm about to suffer very compassionately sends this time again nectar from his heart that arcs around, enters our crown, fills us completely and forces out to the top of our body all the imprints from all the harm we've ever done with our speech, and this is our favorite, isn't it, as humans, we love our speech. All the nonsense that comes out of our mouths, rabbiting on about nothing, all our opinions about things, you know, all the harsh speech, criticizing others behind backs. We love to do that, politicians all day, you know, and lying, specula even speculating. We might not even be consciously telling the lie, but we just we always want to give an answer, we always act like we know everything. So we're speculating half the time, misleading people. All this nonsense speech, imagine it, completely eradicated by this radiant nectar filling us and forcing it all out like filthy liquid <clears throat> to the through the top parts of our body, disappearing into space. Just like Lamia, she says, I like this, you know, that when you turn on a tap in the sink, all the junk in the glass comes to the surface, doesn't it? Just like that. Om Vajra Sattva Samaya Manupalaya Vajra Sattva Teno Patita Dito Mebawa Sudo Shayo Mebawa Subo Shayo Mebawa Anurato Mebawa Sarva Siddhi Memprayatsa Sawa Karma Sutta Me Sitam Shriam Kuru Hung Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mami Mutsa Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahung Pe Om Vajra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sattva Teno Patita Dido Mebawa Sudo Shayo Mebawa Subo Shayo Mebawa Anurato Mebawa Sarva Siddhi Memprayatsa Sawa Karma Sutsa Me Siddham Shriam Kuru Hung Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tadagata Vajra Mami Mutsa Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sattva Ahung Pe Om Vajra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sattva Teno Patita Dito Mebawa Sudo Shayo Mebawa Subo Shayo Mebawa Anurato Mebawa Sarva Siddhi Mevrayatsa Sawa Karma Sutsa Me Sitam Shriam Kuru Hong Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mami Mutsa Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sattva Ahung Pe Not one atom left, full of this delicious nectar. All the negativity of speech disappeared into a puff of smoke. How amazing. And now I'm about to suffer this time. Very kindly and compassionately sends radiant beams of laser light from his heart that arc around and enter our crown and instantly fill us. Instantly. 
And as Lama Yeshi says, as soon as you turn on a light the, in a room, instantly the darkness is dispelled, isn't it? Such a good example. So what's being purified now? The delusions, the mind, the source of all the problem, the source of the nonsense that our body and speech do, the attachment, the anger, the hurt, all the nonsense disappeared into a puff of smoke, instantly eradicated. Imagine this, how amazing. Om Vajrasattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajrasattva Cheno Patita Dido Me Bhava Sudo Shayo Me Bhava Subo Shayo Me Bhava Anurato Me Bhava Sarva Siri Me Prayatsa Sava Kama Sutsa Me Sitam Shriyam Kuru Hong Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mame Musa Vajra Bama Hasamaha Sattva Ahum Pe Om Vajrasattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajrasattva Cheno Paitita Dhiro Me Bhava Sudoshayo Me Bhava Subhashayo Me Bhava Anurato Me Bhava Sarva Siddhi Me Prayasa Sava Kama Sutsa Me Siddham Shriyam Kuru Hung Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mami Mutsa Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sattva Ha Hung Pe Om Vajrasattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajrasattva Cheno Patita Dido Me Bhava Sutra Shayo Me Bhava Subha Shayo Me Bhava Aurorato Me Bhava Sarva Siddhi Me Prayasa Sava Kama Sutsa Me Siddham Shriyam Kuru Hung Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mami Mutsa Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sattva Ha Hung Pe Full of this blissful nectar, the blissful light, delusions gone. And they can go because, as they say in Buddhist psychology, they are adventitious. They are not intrinsic. They are not integral to who we are. They are not at the core of our being. They are not our true nature. This is Buddha's incredible finding. When we understand this logically, it gives us great courage. So now we do a little bit more purification. It's like a second rinse. I think of it like that. This is now purifying even what they call the subtlest imprints left over. We've already achieved liberation from samsara, but now we do need to achieve Buddhahood. So we remove even the subtlest imprints. They call it the, it, removing the obstacles to omniscience. So this, is, this happens when we, when we achieve bodhicitta. This helps us even remove the subtlest imprints from the mind. We become Buddha. Imagine this. And when the Lama, we do this, it sounds always a bit busy, but that's how the Lamas do it. You visualize all three together. So do your best, maybe one at a time, perhaps. Nectar going down, nectar going up, and then the light. Removing all these subtle symptoms. Om Vajra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sattva Teno Patita Dito Me Bhava Sutra Shayo Me Bhava Supra Shayo Me Bhava Anurato Me Bhava Sarva Siddhi Me Prayasa Sava Kama Sutsa Me Sitam Shriyam Kuru Hung, Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan, Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mami Mutsa Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sattva, Ha Hung Pe. Om Vajra Sattva Samaya Manu Pala Vajra Sattva Cheno Patita Dito Me Bhava, Sudo Shayo Me Bhava, Subo Shayo Me Bhava, Anurakta Me Bhava, Sarva Siddhi Me Prayasa Sava Kama Sutsa Me. Sitam Shriyam Kuru Hung, Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan, Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mami Mutsa Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sattva, Ahung Pe, Om Vajra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sattva Cheno Patita, Dito Me Bhava, Sudo Shayo Me Bhava, Subo Shayo Me Bhava, Anurakta Me Bhava, Sarva Siddhi Me Prayasa Sava Kama Sutsa Me, Siddham Shriyam Kuru Hung, Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan, Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mami Mutsa Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sattva, Ahung Pe, full of this light and the nectar, all together, even the substance in Prince, gone. How amazing. Now the fourth step, the most important, Babonka Rinpoche says, the resolve to change. But Lama Zabra says, the first one, regret is the first, because it, it opens the door. If you don't regret, you don't acknowledge, nothing can change. So all lead to this. I must make decisions to change. So if we can re reiterate our vows, I will never kill, I will never lie, I will never steal. Remember that it's not just wishful thinking, it's actually strengthening those vows in your mind. It's like strengthening, digging even deeper, that groove in your mind to not kill, not steal, not lie, not harm. This is marvellous. And then, you know, your, your old rubbish habits, 
maybe you know bad mouthing your boyfriend or something you can't lie and say i'll never do it again so you give yourself a timeline as long as you don't lie to yourself so make some decisions for 10 minutes i won't do this for one hour i won't do that for you know one day i won't be lazy i won't put things off all the time all the rubbish things that we do just to harm ourselves as well you know we don't forget those so make some decisions how you're going to change And now I'm about to suffer very happily. Dissolves into us. Imagine. So delighted. Just dissolves our body, speech, and mind, and Lama's body, speech, mind, and Buddha's body, speech, mind, become one. Merge into us. Just be delighted. And that's it, people. Put the mantra down again so I can see you all. There we go. Good. So, sweethearts, that's it. 30 minutes of delicious thinking. More seeds planted. Be, be optimistic. Every thought counts. We are the boss. We put atomic bombs under nonsense. Okay, be glad. And keep living, everybody. John and Sam and Kathleen and Brian and Anthony and Claire and Victor. Wonderful to see you all. Mudid, David, Nefisha, and Bali, all these people. Anna's still up at 4, 4, 4, 30, 5, 30 in the morning. Good on you, Anna, in Liverpool, for goodness sake. Caroline, you're up in the middle of the night and again. My God, look at you. What are you? You must be. You're the same as Paris, aren't you? Caught to 6 in the morning. Well done, Caroline. Okay, and there's Kirk, and there's Jayla, all of you, sweethearts. Good night, goodbye, and thank you, and good morning, and I'll see you next time. Thank you, Paola. Thank you, Bye, everybody.